It's a scene you'd expect at any major sports event. Fans lined up for hours outside. Merchandise stands doing a roaring trade. Broadcast cameras ready for action and fever pitch excitement during the game. Except this is a little bit different. This is eSports, the sport for the digital generation. At the Intel Extreme Masters in Poland, some of the world's best teams are going head to head in games like League of Legends and Counter-Strike. And it's already worth an absolute fortune. The most simple way to put eSports is there's 200 million fans worldwide who watch it. This is bigger than the NHL. Last year's League of Legends World Championship final attracted 36 million viewers, an audience that sports like the NBA can only dream of. These are dynamic games in which lightning quick reflexes and communication are critical for success. And the players are fated like rock stars. But when you play, you're just so focused on playing the games. You don't, you don't like, you block everything out. But when you win and see everyone, like the whole arena full, it's, it's unreal. Players like Faker in League of Legends are international icons. Um, Call of Duty players like Nateshot have over a million Twitter followers. Um, so there's a stardom and celebrity element to it. Once maligned as a pastime for lethargic kids in the basement, eSports is now highly lucrative. The Pakistan-born Saeed Somail Hassan has amassed career prize money of almost $2 million. He's just 17 years old. As you can see in this app we named Bar called Joystick, there's still a niche market for retro video games, but things have changed so much since Kong was king. Over the last 15 years, the advent of internet technology has enabled esports to explode into a highly sophisticated and global gaming community. The creation of Twitch, for which Amazon paid almost a billion dollars in 2014, helped turn it into a spectator sport. Twitch is a game changer not only because of what it represents and that it represents basically like the first global cable channel for esports. As much as I might like um, Stephen Curry, I probably can never see the guy anywhere. He probably will never respond to a tweet of mine. It's very different in esports and that all is happening on Twitch where my favorite League of Legends player realistically might respond to my question. I mean, I might even get to play a game with this guy. That's why sponsors are paying very close attention to the growth of eSports. It might be the only way to reach an elusive young demographic. Games like StarCraft II aren't just meant to be played, they were specifically designed with broadcasting in mind. And that's now an industry standard. And it is impossible to cap the potential of eSports in the future. GG Pulp secures his championship title 4 to 2. eSports is a global sport. It has a huge advantage around any other sport. And these teams usually are focused on regional um, championships and then have some international competition. Um, Esports is, is in its own definition global. You can play against someone in any game at any time in the world. And therefore we think it's going to be, from, a, from that perspective, actually much more global than any sport can ever be. It's safe to say that esports will be very, very close, if not, you know, on pair with the traditional sports we see today like football, basketball and whatnot. For traditional sports and traditional media, so to say, I would be a bit scared, you know?